In December of 1973, the crew of Skylab 4 allegedly felt so oppressed by NASA's supposedly grueling mission schedule that they decided they had had enough. The astronauts would go on strike. Instead of carrying out their scheduled tasks, the crew took the day off and merely stared at the Earth. With the crew aboard a space station 270 miles above them, there was little NASA could do. Or so the story went at the time. News about such an unusual event spread quickly through highly respected media outlets, and the word strike reverberated around the world. However, a later and more thorough investigation would deliver a different, yet equally tense version of events. Strike or not, something did indeed go very wrong that day. Ready, set, go. Skylab was the first U.S. space station, and even though it never reached the level of popularity as the Apollo program, it was equally important to the progress of space exploration. The project consisted of three crewed missions and lasted from May of 1973 to February of 1974. A few miscommunications about the numbering created confusion, so the missions were designated Skylab 2, 3, and 4. Skylab 2 lasted 28 days, while Skylab 3 was in space for 60 days and performed outstandingly well. Its crew was even dubbed the 150% crew upon their return. Skylab 4, the program's third and last mission, was launched on November 16, 1973, and it placed a crew aboard the space station for the most extended assignment yet, 84 days in space. On board an Apollo command and service module on a Saturn 1B rocket launched from the Kennedy Space Center were Commander Gerald P. Carr, science pilot Edward G. Gibson, and pilot William R. Pogue. None of them had been to space before, becoming the largest all-rookie crew sent by NASA. While on the space station, some of their duties included many scientific experiments that ranged from medical activities to observations of the Sun, Earth, and the comet Kohoutek. The Skylab 4 crew was put under an unprecedented level of pressure. They were expected to work and execute tasks meticulously scheduled and without pause for months on end. But the team was prepared and mentally ready to make the most of the time, money, and resources invested in the effort. When the novice astronauts arrived at the space station, they found that they had company. Their predecessors had left behind three dummies to accompany them in their crossing, and they were all dressed up with the Skylab 4 emblems and name tags. However, the first problem did not take long to emerge. Soon after they arrived, Bill Pogue got sick. The crew was surprised, as Bill had earned the nickname Iron Belly for tolerating the rotating chair while also moving his head. But the training was not the same as the actual experience in space. Ed Gibson, the only surviving crew member as of 2021, told the BBC, quote, We felt discouraged because we knew we had so much work to do. That's when we made our first mistake. Pressure. Skylab 4 was on a tight schedule, and the astronauts needed to carry out several experiments. Thus, NASA was especially concerned about anyone getting sick, which would result in the loss of valuable time. Nevertheless, even NASA agreed that they did not provide the astronauts with enough time to acclimatize to their weightless environment before getting to work, as is typical of space missions. Moreover, their timetable had been packed with substantial amounts of work. Even their scheduled spacewalks were doubled from two to four to observe the newly discovered comet Kohoutek. Under such pressure, the crew made a bad call. Gibson explained, quote, We wanted to get organized before starting a big flurry with the ground, so we decided to delay telling them about Bill being sick. In addition, they also forgot that everything they said was being recorded and therefore heard by mission control. The legendary Alan Shepard, who was astronaut office chief at the time, was quick to reprimand the crew, and the exchange was broadcast to the public. Gibson then emphasized that, quote, Al was okay, we just didn't like being chewed out in front of the whole world. He also reminded them that while the Skylab 4 crew was preparing for their mission, the staff had been busy overseeing the first two missions, and they didn't get to know the astronauts well. Gibson clarified, quote, It meant we didn't really get a good working relationship. We didn't have that rapport. Every morning, a detailed list of instructions arrived via a teleprinter. On top of all the chaos, 
Each conference with ground control included a bombardment of questions and demands. While all space missions needed to be conducted tightly, Skylab 4 had an unusually high level of micromanagement. Ultimately, this rigidity led to tensions and misunderstandings, which in turn resulted in an event that was portrayed by the media as a mutiny. Gibson recalled one morning in which they received around 60 feet of instructions. Before getting to work, the details had to be understood. But then a morning briefing took them another half an hour. He expressed, quote, Anyone who's been micromanaged will know that it's bad enough for an hour, but try living like that 24 hours a day, having your day sketched out minute by minute. It wasn't constructive, and we weren't getting things done because we couldn't use our own judgment. To make matters worse, their daily exercise regime was increased to 90 minutes because of health issues. The lack of gravity prevented ideal circulation to their lower extremities. And in addition, Pogue was not entirely well yet so they had to work shifts of up to 16 hours to keep up with their tasks. In fact, they weren't able to take a day off during the first month of the mission. The team's morale was low, and they were increasingly overworked, but their requests to lighten their workload were dismissed. About halfway through the mission, Gibbs recounted, quote, we made our second mistake. Misunderstanding The three astronauts made a crucial decision to better administer their time. Only one of them would attend the daily morning briefing, and they would take turns. As Gibson remembered, quote, That worked really well, except that in our fatigued condition up there, one day we got our signals crossed, and we didn't have anybody listening to the ground. Back then, communication was possible for merely ten minutes at a time, as the station intercepted the ground control site on Earth. Thus, the team was off the grid for a whole orbit around the globe, amounting to 90 minutes, prompting a misunderstanding as the silence looked like a strike. Gibson explained, quote, The word strike went at light speed throughout the control room and out into the news media, who feasted on that. The astronaut added that it was never intentional, but the ground staff misinterpreted the event. And while the actual strike did not happen, the tensions and stress between the Skylab 4 crew and the team on the ground were real. On December 30th, they engaged in a, quote, very tense two orbits of discussions. After that confrontation, ground control loosened its grip on the schedule and allowed the professionals to be more autonomous, increasing productivity and enjoyment. Jerry Carr would call it, quote, the first sensitivity session in space. When the capsule with the astronauts splashed down into the Pacific Ocean on February 8, 1974, they had broken the productivity record of the previous 150% crew, despite all the workload and frictions. Still, the strike story stuck. The New Yorker described it in a 1976 article as, quote, a sort of sit-down strike one day about halfway through the mission. Later on, a Harvard Business School case study on micromanagement built on top of the article, contributing to the urban legend. NASA addressed the matter in a 2020 article that delved into the conflict. It suggested that the confusion could have stemmed from a permitted day off that the crew took, claiming that the team got a well-deserved rest after an extended seven-hour spacewalk on Christmas Day. NASA continues to deny that any such strike took place, concluding, quote, In summary, in evaluating the available evidence, there's no hint that the Skylab 4 crew staged a strike or a mutiny. This evidence was available in 1976, since NASA published all the communications and PAO commentary transcripts shortly after the end of the mission. The astronauts and mission managers were available to be interviewed for their perspectives. In any case, the incident contributed as a learning experience and created a better working environment in subsequent missions. It also provided an appealing story, although exaggerated by the collective imagination. As Gibson stated, quote, Every time someone talks about that flight, the strike comes up. I'm sure God's going to ask me when I get to heaven, if that's where I go, about what happened. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more historical content in all our Dark Documentaries channels.